Welcome to Kaleidoscope where we are positive, daring, different and earth conscious. Earth Day falling this month was first declared by UNESCO in 1970, more than 50 years ago, prompted by the 1969 Santa Barbara oil spill. This year's Earth Day is built on the theme, invest in our planet and on the motto, everyone accounted for, everyone accountable. Let's live by that. A great big thank you to our sponsors on the show. Skills for Inclusive Growth and Australian Aid, Selling for Life, CDB, The Daily Morning Newspaper and Made by Her. If you like Kaleidoscope, subscribe and follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. You can now start a CDB iDeposit Digital Fixed Deposit and experience a range of special benefits from CDB. Looking back at the week that was on CDB Snapshot, Listed companies are seeing a 44% decline, that's 96.4 billion in the December 2022 quarter earnings, which is the first since 2020. That cup of tea is having it tough, with exports declining by 15% year on year from 9.62 million kilograms to 5.48 million kilograms. Apparel exports also decreased by 10.76% in March, with total exports from January to March declining by 14.97%. But the tax man is having it good. Government revenue in taxes doubled to nearly 317 billion rupees. That's 116% in quarter one this year. One in every three people in Colombo has diabetes and more than 50% in Sri Lanka are at risk of becoming diabetic or pre-diabetic. The highest number of child brides in the world at 290 million is in South Asia. And it's a win for South Asia. Diljit Dosanj becomes the first ever Punjabi musician to perform at Coachella this year. on your goals. We will take care of the risks. Silly go life. Welcome to Silly go life news capsule. The newly introduced Gazette 232162 is not sitting right with the Sri Lanka Shippers Council. Implementing this Gazette means it rescinds the 2017 Gazette 204110. By rescinding the 2017 Gazette, which prevented anti-competitive practices including the levying of unethical surcharges, the cascading impacts could mean that Sri Lanka's exports and imports become costlier. Also, it's uncompetitive and it also prompts unethical practices. Explaining some of the bones of contention is immediate past chairman of the SLSC and former policy council member of the Global Shippers Forum, UK, Surin Abesekara. Why is the Sri Lanka Shippers Council against the implementation of Gazette 232162? Sri Lanka Shippers Council as a, a responsible trade body is not against Gazette or the law of the land. Uh, but I think uh, it is our mandate and our responsibility as the apex body representing importers and exporters of this country uh, to make sure to call out the repercussions uh, that would bring forward with this Gazette receding the 2041 Gazette of 2017. So, Suren, what would the implementation of this Gazette do to Sri Lanka's shipping industry? So if you take the Gazette, uh, it's receding um, the 2017 2041 Gazette uh, within where there were controls uh, placed uh, on some of these charges. Uh, so uh, there are two things mainly. Number one was the need to quote um, freight charges all inclusive. Now without that, there will be many components of the freight being broken down to parts and charged. Some of it, like the freight cost per se, would get negotiated, compared, contrasted with the others. All in all, the cost of goods will increase. Then from export point of view, our exports will be uncompetitive globally because the cost of exports are going to go. The Gazette you mentioned, the previous one, was designed to curb uncompetitive practices, like you said, by service providers in the shipping industry. Now, in a nutshell, what are these uncompetitive practices? 
So out of many, uh, I think there are two cardinal principles that could be highlighted. Um, the charging non-contracting parties fees that should actually be paid by the freight contracting, resulting in increased cost of goods and foreign exchange eroding from the country. And number two would be breaking up of freight cost into surcharges, as I said, over 40, should be in all-inclusive rate, according to the Gazette earlier. So they get negotiated based on market forces with the freight rate. Surcharge sometimes used to outweigh freight cost, especially in Inter-Asia, with some lines offering zero freight to Sri Lanka, covering the cost of movement through surcharging importers in the island. Here's a look at our markets. The Colombo Stock Exchange has introduced the listing and trading of green bonds for the first time in Sri Lanka in a move to encourage corporates to raise capital to invest in green projects. In the meanwhile, the CSE's performance this week has been lacklustre. High interest rates continue to dampen sentiment with the old share price index falling by 1.5% and the average daily turnover dropping below 1 billion rupees. WTI oil fell to 77 US dollars per barrel with a 60 US dollars per barrel price cap being maintained by the G7 on seaborne Russian oil and India's refiners switching to Russian oil and exporting lower priced refined products. Gold prices held steady this week at close to one year highs of 2000 US dollars per ounce. Wildlife conservationists are celebrating an endangered animal baby boom is afoot. Two Sumatran tiger cubs, a Malayan tapir, a western chimpanzee, a one-horned rhino, an anteater and a baby tree kangaroo have been born in England's Chester Zoo, while the Oregon Zoo welcomed a baby bontobok antelope. Gives us all hope, doesn't it? British Vogue is turning the spotlight in the right direction, showcasing activists, models and creatives with disabilities, taking centre stage in its cover series, Reframing Fashion, Dynamic, Daring and Disabled. When I walked into the cinema to see Gadi, Children of the Sun, I really didn't know what to expect. I, all I can say is that I sat through the entire film, riveted, totally caught up in a chapter of Sri Lanka's history that for the most part has been erased. The film, directed by Prasanna Vitanage, got a UNESCO award among a host of other awards and was truly a study in extraordinary acting. Today on S4IG Let's Talk is the female lead of Gadi, Dinara Punchiheva, who played Tikiri. Dinara is an alumni of Queen Mary University with a career that spans Colombo, Mumbai and London. Her acting feats besides Gadi includes the Good Karma Hospital, Peacock Lament and Raksa, plus quite a bit of theatre. Dinara, welcome. What was the biggest lesson you learned while filming Gadi? I just learned a lot about how, how hard people work, you know, on set. We worked with an Indian production crew and a Sri Lankan crew. And we, I mean, you watch the film and you know we didn't shoot in very comfortable locations. But people were just so good, you know, the way they worked and how much they loved their job. It's just amazing. So what was it like being on the set of uh, the Good Karma Hospital? So I worked on, again, I worked on production. Um, I, I, in season four, I played a very small role. Um, but when I worked in production, I was more of a set runner. So um, I had to run around, get things in order, I wake up very early. And I think I learned a lot. And I think for, I, I mean, I urge all actors to try and get into production at least once in their life, just to see how hard people work. So you have a short film under your belt. What's it like being a director? But I got into it because you know, I was, I was a little interested after the Good Karma Hospital just to see how it's like, you know, behind the scenes, how to make something. And making a short film was the easiest option at that time. But I don't think I'll get into production or, you know, direction anytime soon. What is it like for a woman in Sri Lankan cinema? When we look at production, for example, we don't have a lot of females. Um, and I mean, the reason is very obvious because it's time consuming. It uh, takes up a lot of time and um, long shoots, weeks, months sometimes. And I think in Sri Lanka, especially in our culture, 
women are at home looking after their kids and I understand that. Um, but I, I wish more production houses would kind of accommodate women, have maybe like in a production house have a lactation room for nursing mothers or proper toilets and things like that when we go out on set. I think that would change um, the scenario a lot more and more women would get into the industry. A lot of women, especially artists, actresses, um, I think um, they're also judged because I think people always think it's glitz and glamour, but I think it takes effort to look effortless and it takes effort to put on an, you know, an effortless production. What made you actually step into the path of acting? It's been what I wanted to do since I was a child. Um, I, especially in school, I was doing a lot of theatre. Um, my father used to show us all these films when we were small and I think for me it was just something I felt very comfortable in and at a very young age, so when I was about six, I think, I said, I want to be an actress. Punchy Actors yes, yes, yes. is yours. Yes. Um, what made you start? So I saw, so I work at this orphanage anyway. I used to work uh, on Saturdays as a part-time thing, uh, just with the kids with arts and craft. And then I saw, you know, the opportunity of drama and how drama just helped with self-expression, confidence building. And it was also like a therapy. I'm not a drama therapist, so I don't do any sort of therapy like that. It's just basic drama exercises that I've learned and I'm sharing. So I just saw how different the kids were and how, um, you know, these not so confident kids would end up being the kids directing the play at the end after about two, three months. And that felt so nice. What would you say to young girls who are trying to pursue a career in acting? What should they be aware of? I'd say, I always say this, there are dreamers and then there are dreamers who make their dreams come true. So be a dreamer who makes your dream come true, you know, study the craft if you can. Um, I think everyone can now because everything is free online. You can do any course on YouTube now. Um, and I'd say also just, just know the reality of it. I think the reality is that Sri Lanka is a very small country and the industry is also very small. So you need to you need to know that your opportunities are very less um, and you need to kind of expand. I always say this again, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. On the boards from today at the Lionel Went is the Stages Theatre Group's groundbreaking play, Ping, virtually everything is fine. Directed by Ruanthi Dichikera and Lihan Mendes, the play addresses the teenage struggle to navigate a predominantly digital world and is part of a larger campaign, What's Why Are Teenagers So Sad? Kaleidoscope popped into some rehearsals and got some insights from the directors. Here they are on Made by Her Life in 60. This play grew out of a question which should never have been asked of adults by children. Why are teenagers so sad? Teenage years throughout history have always been tumultuous. We have all undergone the heartache and the growing pains and the challenges of transforming from childhood to adulthood. But this question is not being put to us by individual teenagers who are undergoing personal hardships. No, this question is being put to us by an entire generation who is now beginning to identify for themselves that they have been cheated, that they have been let down and that they have been robbed of something which is their due. When they ask the question, why are teenagers so sad? This should shame us to our very core that young people are identifying sadness as the quality that defines their generation and their experience of youth. The arts is crucially important to the, the development of society, crucially important to the personal development of these individuals who have come to work with us as well. And, you know, while theatre is all fun and games, you know, it's really important it, it, it provides really important structure and it's through this structure which is the devising process right in rehearsal that this this uh, theme of why are teenagers so sad you know came from the teenagers themselves 
So don't forget to catch a screening of Ping at the Wind from today. We'll see you next week.